The martini as we know it is yet another cocktail with an incredibly sordid and storied past that virtually no one can truly pinpoint. But we can start with two ingredients that must be in the martini, whether classic or modern, and those are gin and dry vermouth. Sorry, vodka, but you won't be making an appearance today. Difford's Guide, linked in the description, has what I consider to be the best history of the drink. It may have derived from the Martinez and Marguerite cocktails, but really only in name. The name, the Martini, shows up in cocktail books at the turn of the century using similar ingredients and builds to the Martinez and Marguerite, such as Old Tom Gin and Sweet Vermouth and Maraschino liqueur. It's not until Apple Green's Bar Book in 1904 that we see the closest representation of how we drink our martinis today. But it wasn't even called a martini. It was called the Crisp Cocktail. The martini in Apple Green's was instead made with orange bitters, Old Tom Gin, dry vermouth, and simple syrup. Thankfully, he added an alternate version that he called the martini, dry that eliminated the syrup altogether. Substantiating the idea that trends carried throughout the world even before the internet, a version of the martini was also published that same year in 1904 by Frank Newman of the Ritz Hotel in Paris with the same build but called for either orange or Angostura bitters and Plymouth gin. The one and only thing they all agree on is that the martini must have French vermouth in it. Except Newman, he just says gin and vermouth. It's enough to make your head spin. And a word on garnish. Most recipes called for guest preference between an olive and a lemon twist. And in our case, for all of these, we'll have both on hand. So as much as I and other modern cocktail folks want to argue with the validity of a martini being only gin and only vermouth, full stop, the truth is, the way that I like my martinis is a modern representation of current taste and just as wrong or right as any other. What then should we do when making a so-called classic martini? Well, let's make two. One will be a bit of a mashup of Apple Green's martini, comma, dry, and the dry martini cocktail, according to Newman. And the other we'll make will be a version that likely emerged in the 1950s that's detailed in the fantastic book by Dr. Cocktail, Vintage Spirits and Forgotten Cocktails. And we'll make all of these with slightly more modern proportions rather than those of the early 1900s. We'll drink like modern Americans. You'll need three ingredients for both of these initial classic martinis, Plymouth Gin, Dolan Dry Vermouth, and Orange Bitters. You can absolutely also use a London Dry style like Beefeater or Bombay Sapphire, and they will give you a very similar effect to Plymouth. So feel free to substitute that if that's what you have on hand. Gin styles probably necessitates an entire video on its own, but I have a link to a fantastic article on gin styles in the description to save us a little time and so we can get to enjoying a martini just a little bit quicker. First up, let's make the dry martini cocktail with orange bitters and equal parts vermouth to gin. In a mixing glass, add three dashes of orange bitters, one and a half ounces of dry vermouth, and one and a half ounces of Plymouth gin. Stir for 30 seconds and strain into a chilled martini or Nick and Nora glass. Garnish with your choice of olive or lemon twist or both. Due to the amount of vermouth in this cocktail, I do like a touch of saltiness that comes from the brine of the olive, so we'll garnish this one with both. Now let's compare it to the slightly mid-century version of it. In this, we'll mix three dashes of orange bitters, half an ounce of Dolan dry vermouth, and three ounces of Plymouth gin. Stir to chill, watch it bloom, and strain into your chilled martini glass. Express some lemon oil and finish with an olive. Gin really has come into its own over the last decade or so. Every small craft distillery in the US puts their spin on what they think gin should be, and it's created a whole new category that we like to call New American Gin. These flavors can be bold with a ton of anisette coming from something like this, the Block Distillery's Spring Gin, or a milder all-around gin like Mr. Reynolds' Aviation American Gin. All gins are distilled with botanicals, the main one typically being juniper, but many distilleries are also creating what they call a botanical gin that highlights other floral notes and flavors like cucumber and orange. The Botanist and Hendrix are good examples of this, but my favorite right now, hands down, is Uncle Val's Botanical Gin. 
With that, I think the modern martini can be made in two different ways. So let's make two. And let's call them the new American martini and the botanical martini. For the new American martini, let's get bold and use the Block Distillery's Spring Gin and Rockwell Vermouth Company's Extra Dry Vermouth, a very cool craft vermouth from wine country in California. It's slightly spicier than Dolan Dry and complements the flavors in the more robust American gin. In the botanical martini, we'll use Uncle Val's botanical gin and Dolan Blanc, a slightly sweeter, more viscous vermouth that leans more toward Le Le Blanc than a dry vermouth and maintains an herbaceous, bright, and dry quality. For both of these martinis, the proportions will be the same. Half ounce of vermouth and three ounces of gin. Stir per the usual 30 seconds, strain into your chilled martini glass, and serve with a twist of lemon. An olive is fantastic with the new American version, but I don't love the brininess of the olive with the botanical martini. However, that's your choice. And since we're in the cigar bar, let's make sure there's a cigar involved. I love a martini with a cigar. The bright botanicals and the aromatics and the burn of a higher proof cocktail make for a fantastic pairing. An elegant drink deserves an elegant cigar, so let's go with my father's number four Lancero. It's creamy and oaky and has an incredible vanilla flavor that gives off some serious herbal notes like rosemary and even lemon at times. It's a perfect complement to a gin martini and it's a long smoke, so plan on making a couple of the different styles of martinis that we uh, made today. I know I will. As evidenced by history, cocktails are a work in progress that are changed and evolve over actual centuries. The martini is no different, and no matter what your style is, take a minute to really appreciate the craft, the history, and the joy of making one of the best loved cocktails of all time.